Hello folks, my today's topic is company. In fact, we are trying to explore this topic, company of one's peers, using Kabirji's verse or shlok. Let us first sing Kabirji's shlok, then we will discuss its meaning. प्रभु का सिमरन साधित साधु की संगत रहो संगत हर प्रभु वसैजी सत संगत कैसी जानी सतगुरु दिया बुझाए जियो सत संगत सतगुरु उत्तम है नानक सतगुरु दिया बुझाए जियो विच संगत हर प्रभु वसे विच संगत हर प्रभु वसैजी कबीर संगत करिए साध की अंत करे निर्वा संगत करिए साध की अंत करे निर्वाण साकत संग न कीजिए जाते हुए बिना सत संगत सतगुरु उत्तम है विच संगत हर प्रभु वसैजी कबीर मन पंखी भयो उड उड दह दिश जा जो जैसी जो जैसी संगत मिले सो पैसो फल का जो जैसी संगत
So what is the actual definition of company? Company is not defined as our physical body being around people because this is misconception. People think once we are among people, that is called company. No, we have to understand this. We have to go in depth of this whole topic. Company is rather defined as man or the consciousness and the intellect. Coming in contact with other people's way of thinking and opinions. Once the collection of our thoughts, the man accepts the company, whether it is good or bad, then our physical body shows that acceptance through its body language and articulation. If our man does not accept certain company, then our physical body will not act and behave the way that other people in our peer circle do. This means... If man is accepting any thought, then it will maneuver the body to act accordingly. That is God company. Actually, the verse is Kabir man pankhi payo ud ud deh dis jai. Jo jaisi sangat mile, so taiso fal khai. This verse we have in Guru Granth Sahib on page 1369. 
in this verse kabir ji is saying that the collection of my thoughts or my man is like a bird that is flying out of my body in various directions once it flies out then it will have some company it will collect kind of thought somewhere it will borrow that is the thin line we have to understand how we are in the company of people how we are collecting the thoughts before moving on we are supposed to understand what man is defined as man is not the same as mind mind is a reflection of thoughts collected in individuals man if man is collecting good thoughts we call it a vacant man or in indian terms jagya man then it will allow the mind to become elevated as well on the contrary if man is collecting immoral thoughts then it creates a destructive and negative mind we have to understand this difference difference between man and mind so mind is following whatsoever man is collecting that is card company the thoughts of an individual are influenced by the people he or she affiliates with so we are supposed to be careful this company and affiliation consists of society or i can say family or one can say friends media today we can say internet movies literature or through cell phone or text messages or we can say chatting or something and so on based on this company man feeds upon the fruit of the thoughts that grow from the people that an individual is affiliated with but the question to ponder is how does one's man eat the fruit because in the verse it is written jo jaisi sangat mile so taiso phal khaye phal means how one eats the fruit accordingly one acts so this question arises here how one's man eat this fruit in fact man observes the environment through the five senses the ears and eyes are receptors to what we hear and see so like that we have organs as receptors based upon what we hear and see we think accordingly and accumulate corresponding thoughts similarly the rest of the senses work in accordance to what they observe within the present moment we should make an attempt at detaching ourselves from negative thoughts of our mind that means whatsoever formed by the receptors in our body we are supposed to clean that we are trying to prevent ourselves from being trapped in hell while living by falling slave to the man we all are being maneuvered by man and man is accumulated with polluted thoughts isn't it we are not discussing hell or heaven or assessing its existence after death people are overly occupied in life after death in terms of whether they will gain salvation be reincarnated get punished in hell or gain comfort in heaven we are not talking in those terms if one learns to emancipate him or herself from the trap of man then one can be mentally stable or attain the state of the elevated consciousness also referred to as jagya man elevated man or man merged into wisdom is it an individuals peers and society fabricate the man because we borrow good company renders helpful people and bad company renders unhelpful people this we have to understand how people become creative good for the society and this whole world that is a root cause we have to understand and how people become unhelpful so good company renders helpful people and bad company renders unhelpful people this has nothing to do with previous life or i should say so called previous life both types of people ideal and worthless still have an effect upon society the result of their effect can be traced back to their company which is the source of their thoughts taking this concept to the next level let us discuss when we actually start coming into contact with our company now we are trying to find out the root cause where individuals man started collecting thoughts ideas the medical science of today discloses that few weeks after conceiving a baby 
its brain starts developing its heart starts beating and it begins storing the conversations between its parents and other family members so that is the start when each individual's man starts receiving if the parents are fighting or if the mother is frustrated irritated and annoyed the child's brain stores these instances and consequently they affect the memory of the developing child these occurrences and the inherited genes initiate the creation of baby's man that is the initiation while the baby is in the womb if the prospective mother begins reading books that promote harmony listens to peaceful music or holy hymns that praise god quits anger and hatred tries to keep herself in good and beneficial company then her child can turn out to be a healthy fit happy and smiling child on the other hand if during pregnancy she watches horror movies listens to cheap and lousy music reads dreadful and shocking novels then her child may turn out to be unhealthy crying screaming or maybe impatient the child may turn out to be frustrated demanding irritated and annoyed and may also start hitting others at a young age so all these are after effects that result from the company of child's man while it is in the womb even the actions of the mother while she is preparing meals for her baby or nursing her baby that affect the thoughts of the child along with the food that she provides our behavior actions and attitude towards the child while helping it with homework while giving it bath or during any other activity influences the child's behavior and developing personality so we have to be very careful how it transmits we don't know that is the main theme of today's whole this topic we are trying to explore the resulting personality is the influenced man whether we are dealing with the child in a strict or lenient fashion whether it is being punished at school or not all such actions and activities are molding and shaping the behavior character and personality of the child so now let us try to understand the importance of our company we have to understand this importance mostly we ignore that we understand that our life and lifestyle are a reflection of our man or wisdom and our thoughts the character of a person manifests according to the thoughts that the man accepts if man does not accept gambling or alcoholism then the individual's character will not be molded by these negative activities but the deeds of immorality such as rape murder burglary riots in the name of religion or community war among nations and the confrontations and hostilities in families are the consequences of man accepting negative thoughts this means if somebody is involved in gambling or alcoholism that means his man has already accepted these kinds of negative or destructive thoughts it is not restricted to his body only it will affect the whole family society and this whole world that is why we have to understand this if a person is involved in good company then the thoughts produce an elevated consciousness subconscious intellect or i should say understanding which are shaped accordingly that is due to good company isn't it and say good man or a saf man or a elevated man or i should say jagya man is developed because destructive or polluted or malign thoughts are deleted we have to omit that first and foremost one must look at oneself that is mandatory one has to take note of the deeds and the actions one carries out bad deeds impact the individuals first and then the individuals family members friends and then society 
For example, if a father is an abusive person, then his child has the potential to become abusive. Or, or we can say, if selfishness is there, anger, egoism, greed, jealousy and hatred influence the relationships within the family and society. Another way to consider the influence of a person's habits is to look at the environment. In the midst of today's world, there is excessive pollution. This has resulted from every individual's behavior in which one contributes to pollution and littering. We never think that if I throw something, then it will go into the drain and finally it will create some problem. It will affect on the environment. And that is the root cause. This can be considered the byproduct of selfishness and carelessness which results in a negative impact to other people, the ecosystem and the earth. However, if people have a habit of being clean and hygienic, then pollution can be reduced. By falling into the good habit of saving water, planting trees and not wasting food, a positive impact will result, obviously. If someone is an alcoholic, then there will be a negative effect on the entire community. If someone uses abusive language or drives after drinking or I should say wears indecent or vulgar and disgraceful clothing or dominates others, then it will affect not only that person's family but again the entire community. Finally, we can understand that good and bad habits of a person not only affect the individual and the individual's family, but also affect the community, the nation and the world. In fact, money is imprinted by one's company and society. For instance, when someone plans to buy a house, the person gathers information about the particular locality. We all are concerned. That is why we do this exercise. We try to find out the kind of neighborhood, the kind of people, the kind of parks, the kind of schools and their teaching standards, the environment of the school and the type of students studying in it, and if there is any crime or drug use in the area. Everybody considers this. The reason people consider these aspects is because they know subconsciously that one will be molded by the type of environment of the particular area. Furthermore, when people are in the process of finding a spouse for their son or daughter, in addition to find out house or something, similarly people think that how to find out the spouse. They consider they try to gather information about the area in which the potential spouse lives in and that individual's friend circle and family he or she has. If the parents see that prospective spouse is involved in bad company or engaged in misdeeds, then they avoid to have such relationships. Indirectly, they try to refuse that. The underlying reason for this is that people know that Man acts in accordance to its company. This means everybody knows how one's character is molded subject to man had the company. So if the potential spouse is involved in bad company, then those actions will also influence their child. This concept is illustrated through a true story that I once read. Let me share that story with you. Once a panther took the child of a human being. The child grew up with the panther and her kids. One day when the child was brought back to his family, he walked like a panther on all fours. He could not walk like human beings. This happened because the child mimicked the way the panthers acted as he grew up. This means he had that kind of company. He had never come in contact with any human being. So he only saw the way animals walked and adopted their way of walking. First of all, his man accepted this way of walking and then his mind is giving message to all these fours how to walk like an animal, how to mimic. 
In another account, a hawk's newborn was left along with the hen's offspring. Since chickens cannot fly, the hawk's offspring never learned how to fly either because he never saw them flying. One day when the hawk saw other hawks flying, he tried to fly but did not succeed. Ultimately, when he was taken back to the hawks, he learned how to fly. That means first of all, man started gathering this idea and this idea transmitted to the brain and now brain is developing, now brain is helping one to fly. So again, we reach the same conclusion, the company one affiliates with influences his or her behavior and habits. In another instance, a German Nobel Prize winning behaviorist, Conard Lorenz, conducted an experiment with geese. Geese naturally follow their mothers few hours after hatching. And Lorenz decided to take be present after the geese hatched instead of their mother. This is the first object the geese saw when they hatched was Lorenz, in spite of their mother. The geese treated him as their mother and began following him around. After publishing this, Lorenz won the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine. So again we conclude that we are today, the personality and character we are presently has resulted from our company and our society, not because of a past life or previous life or I should say so-called previous life, if there was one. Some fathers and grandfathers who like to drink also teach their kids and grandkids to make a peg or I should say glass of drink and even allow them to take a sip of it. When these children grow up, those sips that they were given turn into alcoholism. That is a root cause. As a result, the poor habits of the fathers and grandfathers shape the character of the child. If a child is aggressive, do not like to sit with their parents or do not prefer to spend time with family members, instead he is delighted to be with their friends or freak out with them. These are the symptoms. I should say these are the habits. These are the points we have to note down which are the root cause of this alcoholism, aggression, and uh, disharmonious life within the family. So these symptoms show that child is within the bad company. Why today we have disharmony in our family, in our relationships? Because we have not understood ourselves. Whether it is a relationship between a husband and a wife, grandparents and grandchildren, or sister and a brother, or whosoever. There is no sense of love at all. We have an overconfident mindset that I am perfect and therefore I don't need any company for wisdom. This results in our individual downfall and then the demise of our relationships. Sometimes we say that since we have completed our education and have built our careers, we don't need any constructive company. Ladies do not get time out of their household chores beauty parlor appointments, shopping and other routines. If they do get time, then they are busy in socializing and attending parties. Men are always busy at work and are restricted to obsessing over their earnings. These are the routines we, where we consume most of the time. During leisure time, they take their families on lavish vacations or sit in the company of other men who enjoy drinking, exploiting women and throwing useless parties. We can spend all of our time engaged in these worthless activities, but cannot find time to follow or listen to the truth. Unless we listen, we cannot delete this pollution from our mind. Then how come our thought process will be clean? That is due to malign. Man, we do not have the proper company and nor do we desire to elevate ourselves. 
we think that everything is perfect for us but when we face problems in our life then we are unfortunately engulfed by depression our relationships reach the point of divorce that is why the divorce rate is increasing we create disharmony within our precious friendships we get frustrated and irritated with our lives and sometimes go to the extent of committing suicide this happens because we ignored the gift of truth and did not grasp or live by it this means the biggest sin is ignoring the truth like that there are students who are too obsessed over studying and establishing their careers they dream of taking their business to new heights by working day and night and thus refrain themselves from truthful living there are some people who argue that their regular visits to religious places or temples show that they are living truthfully this is another group who thinks we are perfect we don't need wisdom because we every day we go to the religious places or we are we are just fulfilling all these what we call rituals they create their own definition of company or sangat and define it as the group and the congregation of people at a religious place in fact these people only go to the religious places but pay no attention to what is being preached and continue to socialize only in fact it must be understood that despite the fact that there are other obligations in life good company is necessary to create a good human being and to contribute to this whole society company is our man or our consciousness interacting with other people's habits actions and thought processes this could be through the media literature or various traditional practices some of us refrain from the company of the truth sat di sangat sat di sangat is not only people who have wisdom but also sources of company that deliver wisdom to our man individuals man however we surround ourselves with people who are immersed in their education careers or businesses only a minority of the people who visit religious places on a daily basis attain the ability to live truthfully whereas the rest of us go without a desire to learn anything most of the people they don't have this desire this zeal or spirit is not there that i am going to the religious place to understand the wisdom they just mechanically practice this most housewives and working women do not have time to understand the truth like we have discussed earlier parents usually get their children ready in the morning for school but rarely wake them up for the purpose of any mind elevating discussion we are concerned for our children's education their career their sleep their nutrition their luxury their homework their exams their dance their swimming right like this but rarely do we make any effort to give them knowledge of truth because we don't have any value about truth we have no value for wisdom at all and we don't know that this wisdom will help us to get out of this problem which we are facing all over the world today we fail to understand that our lives are ephemeral every moment is passing and will never come back this is called chin chin aud bihata each and single moment is being wasted it is going it is passing it will never come back we have to value this time not only when somebody will be old right from beginning since childhood our children's valuable time is passing away during his or her schooling college and career slowly the career begins to take over his or her life and job hours take away any free time there was if there was any time that was never consumed for having wisdom isn't it then the kids get married and are busy in the lives of their own children if any problem arises in our children's lives 
such as divorce, career or financial instability. Like these days, stock market is down, all over the world the market is down, economy is going down. Or I should say any family difficulties. We blame it on the deeds of the so-called previous life or fate or other superstitions. Sometimes people throw this blame on the God. In fact, the truth is that the problems arose from ignorance and the lack of time to associate with the company of truth. The more we ignore the wisdom, the more we are facing this problem. Because like an Arab, this ecosystem is being disturbed. Similarly, this environment problem we can relate to our man also. It is also collecting pollution. So we should try to give equal importance and value to morality as we give to our education and career. Some students get a chance to go abroad to study and others dorm at their universities. Some of these students fall into a poor circle of company where they begin to smoke, drink, do drugs and ditch classes. All these things take place because of the lack of the wisdom and I should say lack of good company. If any one of them did not have morality with him as a treasure, one is bound to fall in this kind of bad company. There is a saying that explains that a man without the knowledge of himself and his heritage is like a tree without roots because he has no stable or firm or strong foundation at all. Today we do not bring our children or our family members to any religious gathering or mind elevating programs. People have time to go to the ceremonies, but they do not spare their valuable time with their family members, particularly their children, into these seminars. When we are having these living treasure programs and it will help everybody to elevate. So most of the counselings when we are having with the people, they have family problems. All these family problems they have due to the bad company or their polluted man. But they will waste time for parties, ceremonies, ring ceremonies and I should say for unfruitful exercises. But they never spare time to listen to these things. Most of the times they prefer to go to the parties, casinos, swimmings or holidays or having dinner outside, isn't it? They do not understand where they are wasting time. The excuse they give is that the child has to finish homework. Exams are approaching. Or in India mostly they say my child has board exam. This is 10th class or this is 12th class or something, something. Exams are approaching or there is no time to spare out of the busy schedule. The wife cannot come because she has to take care of the children. If husband is attending the program, wife is sitting at home. Again, the family is not balanced. Wife is also supposed to understand and attend these programs. Why always husbands they go out and attend? Or sometimes wives are going and husbands are busy at work or having their parties or having alcohol or attending something, something. But we have to understand that both father and mother are supposed to attend these elevating programs. Both are supposed to have this wisdom. Then equally they can dispense or I should say this can uh, imbibe into their children. If wife cannot come because she has to take care of the children. Now the question that arises is does the child remain occupied with taking exams during the entire year? We have seen where they waste their time. We know this. But whenever we are talking about these mind elevating programs or how to clean the man, how to make good character, then they say exams are coming, homework is there, we are very busy, there is no time. Does the child not attend any family functions, parties or other gatherings? Does the child cease to watch television because of these exams? We should find out that this is really escapism. 
most of the times we are taking these excuses because we want to escape from the wisdom in fact we try to fix or i should say we try to fit in the society subject to whatsoever society is doing but we do not try to fit into the wisdom or we are we are not trying to be tuned subject to wisdom there is always free time in a busy schedule however this free time is never used to attain the knowledge of truth later the child will face difficulty in handling the problems that can arise in life there will be no harmony with the spouse the child will grow up to be like a tree without firm roots he has studied he has all luxury and everything he has enjoyed everything but lacking morality so there is no root at all there is no foundation no strong base at all one who attains the knowledge of truth acquires an understanding of how to live life this means one has to understand the truthful living the righteous manner to live this life through wisdom the character and personality are molded and shaped according to the wisdom the person acquires for example when a plant grows in a well watered area with abundant sunlight it grows to be green and healthy however if it grows in an area with pollution and poor sunlight it will be unhealthy and eventually die in the same way our man grows so in fact man gathers good thought process then we will prosper towards that direction if it gathers bad or malign thought process then we will prosper towards that direction no it depends on individual in addition to this we have to examine the different types of company we have understood up till this point that company can be of two types one that involves humans and the other that involves our environment when we are talking about the first type of company it includes the traits genes and thoughts good or bad that we have acquired from our ancestors family and friends also some people are always in the misconception that company of truth refers to going on some sort of pilgrimage reading a sacred text or simply by going to temple but guru nana clarifies this misconception by explaining that pilgrimages or other religious activities are not the routes to attain good company the company of truth affects our man towards positive direction not the physical body traveling somewhere so man has to collect truth collect positive thoughts collect wisdom the second type of company includes the company of literature movies media or the internet or the television etc it is that that books are a man's best friend but if we start to read cheap books and dirty literature then we are influenced negatively if we spend hours and hours on the internet or watching television then again our man is influenced by them consequently if this second type of company is not positive it can hurt us all the same because if this second type of company is feeding negative or i should say shortcomings or evil kind of thought process then definitely it will hurt i'm not saying that literature the television or the internet should not be read watched or used but if they are being used for wrong reasons they will serve as negative company and pollute our man that is called mala man that is called sutta man malign man today people give respect and attention to those who are rich and have many materialistic possessions however if these people lack moral values or fail to offer truth then those material possessions do not serve any ideal purpose for example if you find a person who lives in a slum area with low income and have no car or broken car or old car scooter or car or bike or whatsoever that person can potentially have better morals and live more truthfully 
than others. Unfortunately, we never give a minute of our time or agree to sit in the company of those who do not own a BMW car or have a house on three acres of land or socially well off people. So, we have to understand this. Having these things or not having these things, it does not matter. We are not talking that all rich people are bad company. We are not trying to say this, that all poor people are having morals. In fact, this worldly success by looking from outside that one has this, this or one does not have this, it has nothing to do with morals. So we have to give importance to the morals, not to these things. We sit with the people subject to these things and we ignore people subject to those who don't have these things. Under the influence of bad company, we can lose our character and honor, our self-esteem. We begin to adopt and practice vices instead of trying to elevate ourselves. So we have to understand from where I can collect good thoughts. So we should pay attention to the influence, thoughts and philosophy of the company we affiliate with. Because it can make or ruin our lives. We should refrain from being in the company of an individual who does not accept or live on the path of the truth. B1 is rich or poor. Generally people think that if a well-natured and a good charactered child grow up, grows up to adopt a bad character, then it is the result of bad deeds from a so-called past or previous life and vice versa. While a person is young or in the age of adolescence, the tree of his or her thoughts is raw and fragile, which is why negative company can influence him or her easily. This bad company can completely uproot his or her thoughts and can turn that person into someone with a bad character. Despite the fact that someone of young age cannot understand right from wrong completely and is more vulnerable to getting influenced. It does not mean that adults are not potential victims of bad company or privileged to the influence of good company. Anybody can, in any age. If a good person meets bad company and adopts vices, then that person did not understand the true meaning of truth. But if that person meets good company and his mind gains wisdom and learns where he or she made mistakes, understand the influence of bad company, then that person gains immunity from being victimized by bad company again. Because he was not firm. His man really did not understand the truth. Only physically one had the good company. Once the current of wisdom enters man, it destroys and drowns all the bad thoughts and vices of that person. Finally, that person is bound to become an ideal individual. But only after adopting and following the truth. So that is the yardstick. That is the foremost idea. Or oh, I should say that is mandatory. That one has to understand it. Sonia, Manya, Man ki tapao. One has to listen, then understand and then live it with full passion. Then one understands and follows the truth. Today we call this 21st century known as century of knowledge and equal opportunity for all. Education is considered good company but these days schools give sex education to their students at a very young and tender age. At this time, the children are like trees with roots that are not entrenched deep enough. Their character is not molded. Their character is not made properly. It has no strong footing. Although education is good company, but today's sex education is still rendering teenage pregnancies and AIDS amongst youngsters. Now, question arises, what is at fault? The education or lack of wisdom accompanied with it. We should educate children with morals and values of how to make decisions rather than blindly accepting education. So children should be equipped with wisdom along with education so that they do not misuse any of the knowledge they are given. 
because they are given this sex education at tender age and they don't have wisdom with them their thought process or their character is fragile that is why this teenage pregnancies problem or feticide killing or abortion or small girls being exploited this is happening murders and depressions all these things are happening the company of the television and the internet promotes sex and influences them negatively so this is the moral duty of all people all schools all colleges all countries education without moral teachings leads to the downfall of the children's character because it does not teach them how to make the right decision based on the knowledge so we have to take this responsibility that they should not be given this education unless they are fully equipped with wisdom these days people are fond of being modern people want to look and feel younger and thus adopt fashion they try to show that i am young the fashion of today generally promotes less clothing so now this is fashion today this is the trend that if you want to look younger you should have less clothing i'm not saying that everyone adopts this style of dressing but there are many parents who adopt or accept the vulgar fashion of today's world parents who generally wear and allow their children to wear such clothing ultimately influence their children's consciousness this has something to do with their character the child grows to wear these clothes and loses his character's credibility sometimes when children see their parents older siblings or relatives behave disrespectfully to their elders they begin behaving similarly because they follow how my father is talking to grandfather or how my mother is talking aggressively to grandmother right they copy this they mimic this and ultimately it becomes their habit they see that since the people around them do not give respect then they do not need to either it's obvious because they think that it is already acceptable respect is delivered by dressing appropriately talking kindly and showing care and affection if mother is not doing this or father is not adopting this practice then children will copy this but if the family of a child disregards these signs of culture and respect then they are bad company for the child all these elders so called elders siblings or parents let us recap what we have discussed so far an individual who has a weak man even with a good character can be easily influenced by bad company now think this way if four people are sitting in a room with one ill person then any healthy person with a weak immune system can catch the illness of the single that particular sick person in the same way if the immune system of a good person's man is not strong then that person can become a patient of the illness of vices that's how our bad character is fabricated when people begin to abscond and lie about things then it is the by product of bad company children who lie to their parents spouses who hide things employees who steal and others who use mischievous ways to trick or fool people are the puppets of negative influence they are not doing it by chance they are influenced by negative thoughts again the sources of man's good and bad company can be people or media internet literature and the television a person who is under negative influence dislikes the people who talk about the truth most of the people they don't like if somebody is talking truth wisdom because they are already influenced with bad company bad thought process that person wastes time engaging in unfruitful exercises once my daughter told me that on the first day of school her english teacher told her that he attended three weddings over the summer 
the three brides obsessed so much over their weddings and wanted everything to turn out perfect. They spent seven months planning, arranging and spending money to have the best wedding possible. This is not being practiced in America only. Everywhere. We can see even in India. They annoyed their parents and fiancés to spend large sums of money for useless items. They bought the most expensive flower arrangements, wore the most extravagant dresses and booked the largest wedding halls. Sadly, two out of three of the couples that got married are now divorced. Within few months, we can see this practice going around all over the world. People spend so much, but they do not understand how to create harmony, loving relationship. That's why they end up to divorce or sadness or depression. Her teacher said that it is very unfortunate that these couples wasted so much money on lavish weddings, yet never learned how to love their spouses. These fruitless exercises are the results of negative company in which people see their friends or celebrities throwing expensive parties and want to mimic them to gain social acceptance. Being indulged in these kinds of exercises, they never take time to know and love the person that they are marrying and are actually holding the party for. Rather, they should try to understand that how one can buy this, one can earn this, one can live this patience, understanding, balanced state of mind. Loving relationship can be created through these kinds of things. But they keep on wasting their time for unfruitful exercise. Such people think of the truth as being backward. If anyone tells these people that they should not waste money or should buy something less expensive, they get annoyed and don't listen to that person. As a result, these fruitless exercises and the ignorance of truth renders the person unsatisfied. That's why we see after marriage, most of the husbands or most of the wives are dissatisfied. They always have wants. They always have complaints because they are unsatisfied. Ultimately, the person ruins one's own life along with relationships with other people. If we fall into the circle of bad company, then our lives will be difficult forever and we will ignore the truthful path. That is why people keep on ignoring because they don't know the value of this true path. But if we stay in good company, we can be content, happy, peaceful, stable, and make our relationship prosper, we have to be hopeful. If one has been corrupted by bad company, one can be changed. If his or her man does not accept the influence of good company, then the change will never happen. So, there is always this chance, this possibility that one can be a good character person, having harmonious or loving relationship. Truth is only accepted by those who are open-minded and are willing to listen. So any bad corrected person or the person who has accumulated bad thoughts and whosoever has bad thought process or bad man, malign man, if he or she is open-minded to listen the truth, then one can be changed. One can be transformed. Definitely. Many people ignore the truth and become rigid and stubborn. Because they do not want to change their negative character. People are scared to hear the truth. Because they know that if they do, they will be convinced to abdicate their ego and pride and abstain from wrong practices. So they are scared that I have to be transformed. They are scared that I have to leave all these bad habits. That's why they are not trying to listen the truth. It is also contagious. The people who want to attain the truth surrender themselves completely. That is why it is said in the Guru Granth Sahib, Man ki mat tyago harjan, hukam bujh sukh paiye. They have to surrender. Sometimes people believe that by adopting one good thing, they can live longer. Some continue to be selfish and engage in fruitless activities. 
they think that there is no need to transform into a good human being because they can adopt a good practice to live longer you see people start to do exercises or yoga or workout because they realize that it is good for flexibility steady breathing and looking younger or their figure or looking slim or this and that but they never let go of their anger because they believe that yoga will keep their health and body in perfect shape though yoga is not teaching them exercise is not teaching them to take anger to be a bad character person but they think that once i have fixed up my body with yoga i don't have to drop my anger and all these things and again they are having imperfections they are having shortcomings which is the root cause of their malign mind because they believe that the yoga will keep their health and body in perfect shape we must recognize that we will not live forever attempts at making ourselves invincible will not work if we want to live a healthy life then we should abstain from immoral deeds and elevate ourselves to help society simply by adopting a single good practice we are merely fooling ourselves into the sad lie of thinking that we can live forever medical science reveals that when a child is an adolescent his or her body produces some hormones that result in physical and mental changes during this age the child is unsure and lost as to his or her goal in life and can easily stray off track at this stage any mistakes of the child should be handled with love care and affection we are not supposed to be angry we are not supposed to handle with anger frustration or speaking loudly like parents they yell at the children at that time it should be handled with full tenderness so these kinds of children should be handled with love and care not by dominating them or by forcing them this age is when his or her character is molded friends are a major source of influence but if they are not good friends then the teenager will remain lost the child should be given the company of truth so that his or her body does not produce hormones that provoke bad behavior for example if father or mother they are dominating yelling or frustrated using abusive language or scolding at the child or handling the problems with anger or speaking loudly at the child then child's body will produce negative hormones which will provoke aggressive behavior child will try to go away from father or mother the child should be given the company of truth and loving environment so that his or her body does not produce hormones that provoke bad behavior good company is the only way to create a good character in person be it from parents friends or secondary sources that we discussed earlier these days we think that if we practice and follow the truth others will think that we are backward most of the people they think this way we do not want to face rejection from our relatives friends colleagues etc for example some people think that being religious is looked down upon when people hear that we pray and visit the temple they think that we are wasting our time we invest so much importance into what other people think of us that we begin to change ourselves only to please them as a result we keep on practicing subject to people not subject to wisdom or truth so we don't want to become that we are becoming that because people accept that in fact that is not our character that is not our sai supa that is not our goal at all because we want to please others so as a result we keep on practicing what others will accept this results in our demise because we are seeking to please people who themselves are clueless 
as to what they should do to have a successful life. There is very popular quote by Will Rogers. It reads as too many people spend money they have not earned to buy things they do not want to impress people they do not like. It is really sad that we care more about impressing people who we do not care about and waste our time and money in such fruitless activities. The company of truth is what can enlighten us and show us the right path. This foolish game of show off is not necessary. We only need to improve our own lives and the lives of those who are willing to listen. We have to share wisdom with them too. Those who are really looking or trying to listen. Those who are really interested. Sometimes we befriend people who we may not like. We might accept them as friends because they are rich or popular or are good looking and we decide to follow their lead. But what we should look at is their moral standard. But what we should look at is their moral standard. One with profuse amounts of money but a lack of moral discipline really has no positive influence on anyone. By following that person's footsteps, we are only taking more vices and hurting ourselves for aesthetic beauty and popularity by association. Let us understand through this joke. Very interesting. Once upon a time, someone dared to tease the lioness of the jungle. The lion was enraged and decided to call all the animals of the jungle. He asked them to stand before him in a line so that he could ask every single animal if it teased his wife. All the animals were very scared because after all, they were before the king of the jungle. They did not know how the lion would treat them. But there was a little mouse standing in the line that was giggling constantly. He seemed to be very happy and excited. The other frightened animal seemed surprised at the mouse's excitement and asked him what was making him laugh hysterically. The mouse replied, I am excited by the fact that someone suspected me too. We symbolize this mouse that is excited just by the fact that he has been accepted into a higher level of society. We are happy that we associate with friends who are rich and affluent. At this moment, we do not care if these people will have a positive or negative impact on us. When these friends leave our sight in times of stress, we regret befriending them. We should realize that friends with morals will stick by us even in times of hardship. But those who worship money will continue to give preference to money rather than to people. Those who do not have the company of truth are left in darkness. When the bad deeds ruin our lives, we become depressed, sad and lonely. We feel as if we have no answers. We are faced with challenges we cannot control. And ultimately some commit suicide or murder others. To prevent ourselves from plunging into this darkness and helplessness, we must stop being ignorant to wisdom. Once we enter the bliss of truth, we can be free from our worries or these mishappenings. The influences that erase evil thoughts from my man, individual's man, are the true good thoughts that are derived from good company. If something has a good impact upon us from anywhere, then that is the ideal company and the ideal friendship for us, for everybody. When our man comes in contact with good company, our bad habits automatically Flush out of our thoughts. We stop gossiping, being frustrated, hating others, being jealous of others, competing against others, etc. etc. Instead, we involve ourselves in good company and seek to spread good habits to others who have gone astray from virtuous behavior. 
in order to purify our lives we must first recognize our own shortcomings and imperfections instead we involve ourselves in good company and seek to spread good habits to others who have gone astray from virtuous behavior in order to purify our lives we must first recognize our own shortcomings and imperfections if we are in the middle of yelling at someone for a small mistake we should recognize it at that moment and try to prevent it from occurring in the future this way all of our bad habits will slowly cease to exist this is the best way to get rid of that bad habits when we visit a person's house we can tell what his or her personality is like from the home decor now understand this from different angle for example if we visit somebody's house we can easily find out one's personality from his home decor or paintings or collections or photos or i should say magazines at the table and other accessories that really hint to that person's thoughts if there are bottles of alcohol or i should say if they have bar showing all small small samples of alcohol or ashtrays on the table then we can discern the person's habits and likings this means either that person is drinking or that person serves the drink to others or smokes when we enter the house we create a perception of the person so ultimately it is up to us to decide if we want to sit in such company or not because our man will accept we don't have that wisdom with us we don't have strong footing was my mother told me that she met one young boy and that young boy said once i visited america and i sat with somebody and that old man told me please have one pack with me join me or something something so he said no sorry uncle then he again offered him this drink he said no sorry uncle i don't drink when third time that old man offered him this drink he said no no not at all i don't drink this old man started crying and he said when i was young then i was offered once and i took it today i have developed this habit that i cannot live without this alcohol we don't know where we can gather this bad habit but we have to understand if we have good values strong footing we are tuned with wisdom even in the midst of such persons company we will not be trapped under bad influence because our man is strong our man is transformed we have strong footing so wherever we go nothing can influence us but this is mandatory that first of all we have to feed wisdom to our man otherwise we are not strong character ideal person another point worth noting is that some relatives or family friends that we regularly associate with could be negative influence on our families maybe they are not aware of their negative thoughts or habits but they can still cause problems in our personal relation and spread lies and rumors no matter how close they may be to our family we don't know na so what is the potential solution to this dilemma we have to ask this question the best solution is like honey bees that collect honey and stay together in their hive we should collect a company and stay with truth in the guru granth sahib it is said sat sangat mil rahi hai madho jaise madhav makhira at every moment of our life we should seek truth and immerse ourselves like the bees indulge in honey we should make people and ourselves cognizant 
of the evil effects of people the media and films and magazines that have bad consequences on our life we should try to create such an environment in which the world can benefit at large but most of the people they don't have this goal they keep on creating negative environment the biggest sin on this earth is not one committed by a criminal but by one who has the knowledge of truth and decides not to apply it in his practical life people who have understood the truth should make movies and shows serials in which truth peace humanity courage and morality are promoted loving relationships and harmonious life is being preached they should create such literature if no one makes an effort to spread the truth then there will always be rejection because people have this fear if i will start something to take the u turn of this whole society and the family and to become ideal person people think that i will be rejected right they have fear of this rejection for example scientists who began doing aids and cancer research had to begin somewhere to reach their goals although their success is not guaranteed and they faced criticism early on without trying something nothing can be solved i recall an idea that was elucidated in a poem by surjit patra ji जगाह दे मोमबत्तियां उठ जगाह दे मोमबत्तियां ए ता इथे वगदियां ही रैणियां पौणा कुपत्तियां तू जगाह दे मोमबत्तियां एट द लास्ट स्टेंजा सेज वावरोले उठ दे ही रैणे ने तत्ते वावरोले उठ दे ही रैणे ने तत्ते पत चढ़ाने चाड़ देने आके पत्ते पर इस दा मतलब ए नहीं पुंगरन न पत्तियां जगा दे मोमबत्तियां उठ जगा दे मोमबत्तियां दैट एक्सप्लेन्स दैट व्हेन द समर सीजन इज ओवर लीव्स बिगिन टू डाई एंड फॉल ऑफ ऑफ ट्रीज ऑल्दो द लीव्स डाई इन विंटर इट डज नॉट मीन दैट दे विल नेवर ग्रो बैक when autumn and winter pass spring brings fresh new birds that blossom into flowers and leaves again this happens because the tree is still deeply rooted into the ground and is functioning properly like that if we attach ourselves with the deep roots of wisdom we can thrive and prosper even when we are going through an obstacle in life if we are balanced we are deep rooted if we have strong foundation then we will not be toppled by any obstacle so we have to understand that if we engage in the company of the truth we will be benefited always for instance if someone accidentally slips from the edge of cliff and is about to fall into a river try to visualize this if he grabs on to the grass at the edge of the cliff he can either drown or pull himself up if the grass is not deeply rooted it will break and fall into the river along with the person but if the grass is deeply rooted it can save the person's life by allowing the person to pull himself up similarly if we befriend bad company we are essentially holding on to weak grass that cannot help itself it cannot save that person isn't it 
However, good company is deeply rooted in morals and truth and will save us from drowning in the river of immorality. We will be protected. We will not drown in that river of immorality or bad habits and depression. We should seek to be in the company of those thoughts, wisdom or truth which can help us so that we can produce stronger roots and similarly we can help others too. After all, what we are is the result of the thoughts we are accumulating from our environment. So let us try to create an environment for our man through wisdom, truth and morality by which our man can collect good thoughts which can lead us to become an ideal person and this kind of environment can help others too. Thank you.